Okay, I got interrupted before, so I'm coming on from C. Piece has a mass of 0 0.80 kilograms, travelling at 80 metres per second, angle of theta as shown on the diagram, and I've copied the diagram uh, down just here uh, for convenience. Uh, by drawing a vector diagram, show how you could calculate the velocity of piece B immediately after the explosion. The calculation of the velocity of B is not required. Okay, so how you would, uh, using a vector diagram, your initial um, momentum is the same as momentum afterwards. You have to work through momentums before you work through velocities. So um, your initial momentum, that's if you like is the resultant vector. They sometimes draw a big heavy arrow head to indicate as a resultant vector. That's going to be the sum of the momentum of A plus the momentum of B. So momentum of A plus the momentum of B. Now this one's a little bit of a trick here. It's not necessarily a right angle um, between momentum A and momentum B. Because usually you have a nice right angle here for easy calculation. So they don't expect you to calculate it um, as according to this because um, it could be a little bit tricky if you don't know some higher uh, math skills than what we're expected for this. Um, so momentum of B is going to be... Um, uh, where are we? This section of the of the line. You could use the cosine rule or some other such rule. I think this angle is given us 30 degrees. Maybe I'm misreading that from somewhere, but you could do the calculations anyway. Um, what else do we need to know? Um, anyway, the process goes. You need the um, uh, once you have the momentum of B, you have to divide that by the mass of B. But you don't have the mass of B because you, the the mass of B. Um, this to the whole thing. The mass of B is going to be um, the total mass minus the mass of A. Um, because you're given the mass of A, you're not given the mass of B. So you'd have to put all of that into uh, a calculation. You could you could do this for the because of the funny angle and a not a see it's not actually a 90 degree angle. You could use a scale diagram. Uh, you could use the cosine. Is it the cosine rule? Sine rule. I can't remember. I see, even I don't use it. So, um, as a high school physics teacher, I've, sh I've seen the sign or use for this sort of thing before. Um, anyway, you get the idea. Let's move on. Now, consider the effect of gravity as two pieces fall to the ground. A side view of the path of piece A is shown in the diagram below. Piece A falls from P to Q. The vertical component increases by 3.1 kilogram meters per second. Discuss the impulse on piece A as it falls from P to Q. Explain the cause of the impulse and the effect that the impulse has on the momentum of A. Okay, this is an interesting question. It's a little bit different from a lot of other questions, but the impulse is going to um, be... Um, we'll just go through the steps that it asks you to go through. So first of all, explain the cause of the impulse. The impulse force is going to be the force due to gravity. Remember, impulse... Uh, the change in momentum is equal to the impulse force times the change in time. Um, so the cause of the impulse is the force due to gravity and the effect that the impulse has on the momentum has to increase it. Okay, So uh, it increases it in a vertical sense, not in a horizontal sense. Um, so momentum vertically down has to increase um, because it's got this force downwards uh, causing it to accelerate, increasing its velocity, therefore the velocity increases even if the mass doesn't and momentum, remember, is mass times change in velocity the change of momentum if you're dealing with impulse, but um, I think that covers it well enough. Calculate the velocity of A at the instant it hits the ground. Oh dear. Okay, well we've got two things here. We've got the initial horizontal velocity, which uh, just going up to have a look. Does it give it to us? Uh, must be in an earlier section. There we go. Travelling 80 metres per second. So that is um, 80, 80.0 if we're being strictly speak. And it starts from zero, um, and it's going to uh, increase its vertical velocity to a final maximum velocity um, when it hits the ground. And that, does it give it to you the time or something? Um, the momentum increases by 3.1 kilogram meters per second. Oh, this is just the vertical. This is nice. So the vertical component of its momentum increases by 3.1 kilogram meters per second. So all we have to do is take that divide by the mass of A. I'm not going to go through the numbers. I'll just go through the process. So momentum of A divided by the mass of A. 
and that gives you the velocity of A and that. And then all you need to do is um, find this part, which is just 80 squared um, uh, plus whatever this part was squared, and then you square it the whole lot. So square root of V plus, I'll just put that squared plus that squared, and you square all, all of that, and that gives you velocity size, and then you just need to calculate the angle theta, because magnitude and direction, direction there. So the, the angle um, will use your tan function, because you have the vertical and the horizontal, so it's easy to go straight to tan, that gives you 25 9 degrees, your velocity uh, was 88.9 meters per second. And that's all on the marking schedule, so I'm not detailing it in too much. And that's that. There we go.